Now, when we're thinking about the blood groups, there can be groups A, B, AB, or O. This is the ABO system. And the group is determined by the nature of the antigens on the surface of the red cell. So here we have our red cell, the erythrocyte, darker on the outside because it's thicker on the outside. And the blood groups are actually antigens on the surface of the cell. So these triangular shaped antigens represent group A. They are particular shaped proteins on the surface of the cell. And the key thing for the purposes of this talk is that these are genetically determined. Blood group B again is determined by the nature of the red cells and in blood group B there are B antigens on the surface represented by these semicircles. So that's blood group B. Now blood group O is actually blood group zero. O is a corruption of zero. The cells look the same but there are no antigens on the surface of the cell. And blood group AB, well that's going to have both. So we're going to have A antigens on the surface and we're going to have B antigens on the surface contains both. Now the thing about the antigens is they are genetically determined as we've said and also they are dominant. So blood group A antigen is dominant, blood group B antigen is dominant. O is recessive. Actually, it's only one blood group G gene, but it comes as three alleles, the A, B and zero allele. So let's think of an example. Let's suppose we have someone who's blood group A. And let's suppose they are genotypically homozygous for the blood group. And they reproduce with someone who is blood group O. So they'll make gametes. And we notice that this is completely autosomal. It's a normal autosomal form of inheritance. So here we have two genotypically homozygous parents, the diploid cells. They produce the haploid gametes and that could combine with that and that will give us AO. Now because the A antigen or because the A allele codes for the A antigen the A is dominant. So AO, that person phenotypically will be blood group A. And it's going to be the same for that one. And I think you can see it's actually going to be the same for all of these. So we start off with a parent who's blood group A and a parent who's blood group O. And in this case, all of the possible offspring would be blood group A. But of course, they're all heterozygous for the allele. They're A, O. So they could potentially carry the O blood group on to the next generation. So let's think of another example. Let's think of um, A, O. And let's suppose that they marry someone who's blood group B, but is heterozygous genotypically. You wouldn't know that by looking at them. But they are heterozygous. So again we make the gametes. Now that could combine with that and in that case we would get blood group AB because A and B are co-dominant. Both of these alleles are equally dominant. So if someone has A on one chromosome and B on another phenotypically they will be blood group AB 
So both genes co-dominant, both, ex both expressed in the phenotype. But if we take A and O, this person will be AO. We can see they're heterozygous genotypically, but because the A is dominant phenotypically, they will have blood group A. O could combine with B, giving us OB. And again, because the B is dominant over the O, that person will have blood group B phenotypically. Those two could also come together, giving us OO. And because there is no dominant gene present, the blood group O, the recessive gene, will be expressed in the phenotype. And that person will be blood group O. So we can take any combination of A's, B's and O's in the parents, and we can easily work out what potential phenotypes could come as a result of that. So remember, the A and the B are co-dominant. It is the O that is recessive, and it is an autosomal form of inheritance.